Good, and I what just... What else do you want to know about me? <laughs> not, not a whole lot. You did good there. Also, I had the, my own you're, microphone you're muted for the stream. Wonderful. Uh, so no one heard that intro. So I'll have to remember to jump over that. Hi, guys. <laughs> they heard you. They heard all of you. I'm Silo. Sorry, no, roll it back. <laughs> anyway. I'm the creator of the, the, the intro. Silo. Oh, yeah, you did do that. Well, thank you for that. Nice intro, actually. It's like the, the best thing I've ever done for YouTube. Everything else can shove it. All right, uh, Dracon, you want to give us a small intro of you? <laughs> sure. Uh, Dracon, uh, I was once a streamer. Hopefully, we'll start streaming again now that I have this computer. Um, I'm trying to pull my own damn headset off. Uh, and I'm playing um, Braden Petrick tonight. He's a uh, human uh, swashbuckling rogue. And yeah. Good What's your name? Braden. Just just Bra Braden Patrick. Braden Patrick. Braden Patrick. All right. Okay, you scared me for a second there. What do you think I said? Nope, nope. I'll talk to you later about it. All right. <laughs> secrets okay. already. All right, Sonya, you want to give us a small intro of you? There are no secrets. <laughs> um, I'm Red Sonya. I streamer. Um, I'm playing Elatrix Half-Hill, a halfling swashbuckler, who's by uh, but yeah, I'm excited. I, I usually play, like, retro games and stuff, until lately, and it's all WoW. <laughs> yeah, you've been into that hardcore WoW challenge, haven't you? I have. It's amazing. Makes, <laughs> you, really make me want, you really make me want to get into it. You should do it. It it, it really make, makes the game. Well, it's made me fall back in love with WoW. Awesome! I need to fall back in love with that game. All right, uh, Hunts next. Hunt. I am Dave. Okay, that's your character, now Hunts. <laughs> Hi guys, Hunselman here. Uh, I go by Hunts because no one can say Hunselman. Um, Hunselman. I, I am a mummy barbarian. Yes, a mummy who is a bard who's a barbarian. That's it. And he only knows All one right. phrase. I am Dave. I am uh, Gro oh, sorry. Not, <laughs> sorry wait, Dave. Can he, can he change it red. around like uh, Groot can? Like... <laughs> I don't. Uh, I, I never watched Guardians of the Galaxy, so I don't know what you mean. What? What? <laughs> <laughs> We're what? coming back to that one in another day, all right? <laughs> we now know what uh, what uh, Warlock is watching on one of his movie nights. Hold on, I'm working on it right now. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I've got 15,000 points to spend on his channel. You do realize that if you redeem that, you have to be present to watch the movie with me. Bullshit. I stream on Sundays. <laughs> well, then, well, then it's not getting watched. <laughs> Wait, send me your points. I don't do anything after midnight. That's for points. <laughs> well, while these people are trying to force me to watch Guardians of the Galaxy, uh, Dwarvian, you're next. Uh, hi, I'm That's Dwarvian. Another, another, added to the list of the streamers present here. Um, I, I play games on the interwebs. Scourge of that which lies beneath. Um, yeah, I'm playing a Warforged Artificer. Just stepping out of my realm of comfort in this one, so this is going to be yeah, fun. Yeah, surprisingly, he's not playing a dwarf. Listen, all right? <laughs> it took some convincing to get him to A lot of convincing. <laughs> is he not a dwarf artificer? No. Technically uh, not. Warforged. I mean... But we were made by dwarves, so it's kind of like the same thing. It's not the same sort thing. Of. It's... <laughs> Well, thank you, Jorvian. Finally, off. finally, Twisted Panda. If I am not mistaken, I am the only non-streamer here. Correct. Yep. You're special. Yeah. I'm uh, currently not streaming, so it's kind of a half group there. But well, <laughs> I am Twisted Panda. I have spent a lot of time playing games and watching this group's streams of. Everything D and D and not. I um. I am also playing a. Warforged artificer. Me and Jorvian like to build characters off of each other. 
we were built by the same creator, so we call ourselves brothers. Um, Beep boop. <laughs> he understood, it's fine. <laughs> Inside joke, you wouldn't get it. Of course, of course. Well, thank you so much for all your intros, everybody. This is a, well, a little intro for this game. We are playing Adventures of the Ark, our pirate campaign. Uh, and also, uh, for those of you uh, watching on YouTube, um, I couldn't get our usual setup working right, so we're going to be going kind of... The, 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 a lot of stuff is going to happen on the screen. You're going to see the people playing. You're going to see Roll20. It's just going to be it's just going to be a chaotic mess, so... Sorry, not sorry. I, I, I got... I, I'm, here we go. So, is everyone ready to play? Yeah. All righty. I got a power hey. net before this. Let's. Do it. All right. So, let me just bring in my notes here. So, hopefully, I don't forget anything and mess anything up. Oh, right. Writing stuff down. Oh yes, yeah, so I do. I, I do recommend taking notes. All right. So, we've opened up the intro. Oh, I've already done the first one without realizing it. Great. Uh, next, the way the, the way this is work. It's a pirate campaign. You know, you guys are gonna be in. You guys are probably gonna be in charge of your own boat at some point. Uh, this whole world is the Ark. The thing about the mystery behind the Ark is it's a it's a bi it's a big world full of like a bunch of land masses. I almost wanna I almost wanna say imagine a world like One Piece, but not fully based off of it because I only watched like six episodes of One Piece. Only six. Don't worry, you covered point zero 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 six percent of it. <laughs> I think you forgot a zero there, Hunt. Most oh, wait, likely. I'm thinking, the, I'm thinking the manga. Never mind. Alright, I feel like there's something else I'm missing, but I'll just move on to the next step. So, right now, everyone has everyone has made their way to the Ark for one reason or another. Uh, I believe uh, Silo Cat is the, uh, or um, Tormund is the only person that is actually from the Ark who, who elected to be uh, here. He's, a, he's playing a half orc. Uh, everyone else came to this land seeking something. For whatever reason they might that might be, you'll find you'll find or running from something, you know, whatever that reason that might be, they'll, you'll you'll find out you'll find out in time. And they have all they've all been traveling together on this ship for about two months together. You've been you're under you're under the you are sailing under the captainship of Captain Ludwig, a hu a uh, hu a human guy, black hair, usual usual captain pirate captain attire. you and you're all you're all. And you're all just on the ship for your, for your own various reasons. The way the the way things have been going, you've all been sailing for about two months. Uh, with how with and with how and with the way th you've been like traveling from the sanctuary to places like the city of Balmar to small towns like Grim to Ka to uh, Kalmar to and uh, to uh, the Ma to the uh, Ma Marlin Islands, and you are currently on your way. Or you've been you've currently sailed your way through Paralim. You. You uh, found yourself in the ruins in the center of the of Perlim. That was your first stop. The thing about the th the thing about Ludwig is he's searching for a lost treasure, the lost treasure of of Captain Garen Hall Wentworth. Garen Hall Wentworth. Ah, that's the part of the background that I was missing. Basically, 500, 500 years ago, uh, Captain Garen Hall Wentworth went just basically raided the entirety of the Ark, fucked everything up, raided all, raided like. It took about ninety five percent of all the entire the entire area's wealth, all for himself, and it's all mysteriously disappeared before his death. Well, that really is a lot more. Yes, yes, all in one piece. That is like the <laughs> one thing I could say is probably that's the one thing you one. took from one piece. Yeah, I got you. <laughs> and everyone's been trying to find this lost treasure. Well, not everyone's been trying to find this, but there have been a lot of people uh, trying to find this lost treasure. Ludwig is part of a faction known as the Sow, which is the Servants of Wentworth. They are on a, on a constant mission to try to find the lost treasure. And Ludwig has a bit more uh, information on where this treasure might be than the average person. So he uh, decided to go a little rogue, uh, grab a ship with a couple followers, and go find this treasure. And you all ended up on that same ship. Traveling for about two months, you're all you've all gotten to know each other quite well. Uh, you're all the ship goes in like a six day rotations of like, it, the, the you're the the ship is a bit overstaffed basically, so every 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 day like five people get to sit out or six people get to sit out and uh and just you know just hang and rest for that day, and 
every every single time, every six days, it's always you six that are just that are that have the day off. So you've got to know each other a little well, you know. You've got you've 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 got to know some of your history. Uh, our two artificers have talked to Tormund a bit about about you know what it's what the arc is like there, and uh, you know if, if uh, Ele, uh, Ele, Elatrix and Brayden. Are are are, are kind of cut from the same cloth, and you guys have gotten to know each other. You guys have gotten to know each other a bit. Uh, Dave, uh, played by Hans Zellman, is just you know he's owned. He's owned by Ludwig. He's just he he he's a simple guy. Follows commands, all that jazz. And, uh, I am Dave. I just point out that you didn't even bother to learn our names. Are we property to you? <laughs> Did I not say it? Oh, the, did I say that? Did I just say the two art artificers? Artificers, <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> uh, Mugger and Kund, right? Thank you. Mugger and Kund. Okay. Our two Warforged artificers, robot guys, got uh, got to know Torben a bit and learn a bit about the about the arc and how it works. <laughs> all right. So when you when you all went to the ruins in the center of Paralim. Uh, uh, Dave was Dave was there, but most of you stayed on the ship. And he, when uh, when when uh, Ludwig came back with his posse, he was pretty pissed off. But he had, but he, but he, he does have an idea of of, uh, of what of what they're looking for. He basically found a trap door that he has no way of opening, but he's looking for a way to open it. So you're all on your way to West Town to look for clues. Uh, you're about one day's uh, you're about one day away from reaching West Town. And uh, let me just check the next step here. Make sure I'm not forgetting anything. Player backgrounds, two months together, six rotation. And now we move to the scene of the ship, which is which is gone for some reason. Why is it gone for some reason? All the ocean is our ship. <laughs> Our ship is barrels and crossbows. Excuse me a minute. <laughs> yep. This is not. Oh yeah. This is not what was there before. This is. Uh huh. It's a DIY invisible, built it's around a the ship. Uh, it's world <laughs> images. Oh, let me guess. You want the artificers to build you a ship? <laughs> I mean, we would be the best at it. Well, that's true. <laughs> I, just, I just like giving them crap. All right, almost there. We all do. Okay, I think we got it. I think that's good. Okay. It's a little off, but as good as you can get. It. Yeah, it's about as good as we're gonna get right now. And uh, you're all you're all in the ship. You know, you're you're all you're all just. It's it's a pretty it's a pretty easy day. The waves the waves have been favorable to you. The winds and the sailing in your direction, and you all hear a big boom. Then you see smoke coming. And you see smoke coming out of one of the. Uh, also, you can you can put your characters on the ship. By the way, how do you do that again? Uh, you drag and drop. Drag and drop what? Uh, your character. Character from your your journal. Character uh, from your journal. Oh, yay! I accidentally created two. I don't know how to get rid of them. Uh. Huh. <clears throat> done. From where? Yes, yes. Uh, from your journal. There. Ah. Are you doing it so you can we can see? Go from the the now? name, not the picture. If you're having trouble. Yeah. yeah that, that took ah, me a bit to, there we go. Yeah, that's what got me yeah. too right there. <laughs> I was yeah. like, I'm I'm clicking her. <laughs> I don't believe Dave should be in the water though. Oh, I need I need to get a transparent one. That's really cool. I'm stealing that idea. You're welcome. I thought I had one, but yeah, I'll have <laughs> not to go quite. Closer. Almost. <laughs> but hard to see him because he's so small. He's so blue detailed. though. He's blue though. That's all that counts. Blue Are with you a weapon. mummy. Abba D double die. I'm blue man. Uh, where's your group? Uh, you guys are. <laughs> no, everyone's singing it. 
I've been listening to that song on repeat all day, I, and I don't know why. Really? Yes. <laughs> all right. Okay, I've so I will be right back. I have to me to my roll twenty. You have to have what? Yeah, I have to restart my roll twenty real quick. All right, we'll give you a second. I still got, I still got a, dra I still got a drag and drop a character. Yeah, he does. Do you know how long it took me to find a swashbuckler human male that I actually wanted to fucking use a picture of? <laughs> I've been pretty hard because everything would have been Jack Sparrow, I bet. Yes, oh, yes! <laughs> <laughs> and this is a problem. There's so many Jack Sparrows, it wasn't even fucking funny. <laughs> this is a problem? <laughs> yeah. Okay, a little bit, yes, it was a problem. Copyright like, infringement, I, I have nothing I gotcha. against Jack Sparrow, I love those movies. But it was just, it was like, okay, I don't want to be Jack Sparrow. I am Brayden Petrick. I'm a bitch. <laughs> Did you try Googling Brayden Petrick Swashbuckler? I don't think I would have gotten anything for that. Challenge accepted. <laughs> Hold my beer. <laughs> I forgot to add my two free spells, so that's my bad. Oh yeah, I was gonna. I remember you. I remember some of them are missing. Oh, I gotta add a weapon too. That's the only thing. Cause I, I forgot. Uh, I get an arcane weapon or blunderbuss or something. I don't even know. Alright. Uh, Panda, are you? you Panda, are you cannon. good? Yeah, the yeah I'm good. I, I fixed it. All right. See, by the way, this is what my light would be like. <laughs> that was... really bright thing on my forehead. I want to see my pores. Also, I'm going to quickly remember. I'm gonna quickly make your nameplates visible for everybody. Oh yeah, and our health. I don't know if it's important right now, but no. But I mean, health right now, no. But the nameplates, yes. Yeah. Uh, I wonder if, if I post a link in the uh, chat on Roll Twenty, will it actually do the link? Um. Oh yeah, yeah, will. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There you go. <clears throat> <laughs> no. <laughs> that is... That's more a bard. First off. <laughs> what do we have here? This is Dave before he went in the ice. Um. <laughs> Challenge accepted. All right. <laughs> no, that is Dave before he went into the ice. <laughs> All right. So. Getting a bit back on track, you guys heard a You're big welcome, boom. Enjoy. Okay. A big... All ladies watching. You had a big boom come from inside the ship, and you see smoke coming out from, from one end of it. Uh, we'll say uh, this end right here. That smoke, and uh, someone and somebody pops up from the from the uh, some. Uh, where's the? Uh, you see someone coming up from the from the bottom of the uh, from the from the bowels of the ship, and they say, "Good news, everyone." I was one. Farnsworth. <laughs> Good news, everybody. He makes his way down. Also, I'm trying to get rid of that stupid mark that I just made on the ship. It is what it is. Gone. It says, Good news, everyone. I have discovered a way to make a pocket dimension inside my cabin. I now have access to my to all my work again. Doodaloo. Not a good idea. A good thing, guys. Well, I don't think it's, it's probably fine. Thing. It's fine. It's fine. He seems uh, trustworthy. Yeah. And then, it, and and you know, you know this by the way. You know him as Professor Parnes, by the way. <laughs> Davis Professor. Oh, yes. He's been on. He's Parnes. He's not. He's not like an official. Me he's not like officially part of like the of, of like Ludwig's crew. But he's been. He's been with you like an unusually long amount of time. Like a lot of times, the ship will take passengers from other places, and you know they'll they'll hitch a ride to to wherever to wherever um you're sailing to next. But Parnes has decided to just stick. Has been sticking around the entire time, paying paying a few silver to Ludwig to keep his to keep his cabin, and uh, he's been and he's always been doing some ex some crazy experiments. You've all had like many conversations with him. He's he's a he's a he's an odd fellow, of course. And I and I choose this and I choose this image because yes, he is based off of Professor Hubert Farnsworth. Sue me. 
that is arrangeable. We will we will let the people of YouTube do that for you. <laughs> and uh, he he actually and as he's and as he's going back down uh, the steps, you hear him, you hear him stop and you hear him come back up. And he says, "Oh, by the way, everyone, I have now that I have access to my laboratory again. I have some gifts for you." And uh, everyone, roll a d one d four thousand. Forgot that you put that in there. One <laughs> d unlimited. And if you're unfamiliar, and if you're yeah, just roll, type slash roll slash one d four thousand. I don't know if that's a good or bad thing on my part. Probably bad. Probably oh. fucking mending. Another you know mending. You lost oh, mending. Um, fuck. That's an inside joke from the last campaign. There you go. Just Lord, did we have a lot of mending. All right. One, we had two, a lot three, of four, not mending five. by the end of it. Someone hasn't rolled. Uh, One, two, here. three. Got silo and uh, no. I mean, I count six. I oh, count six. oh, okay, yeah, that is a roll on it. Okay. Is just underneath his uh, weird that, encryption yeah, there. I, 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 I swapped my number. So he approaches El. So since uh, since she's like conveniently down these steps, like Elatrix, I have a I have a gift for you inside my bag of holding, and he reaches inside to to hand you a. A game of dominoes inside of a small leather case. Nailed it. And then he walks over to Brayden Petrick. Ah, Brayden, yes, of course. I have, I have a, I have something for you as well. And reaches into his special bag of hold, and reaches into it, not the same bag of holding, but another bag of holding that he has. And he pulls out a. It's one two. <laughs> no, you can't do that. Don't do that. Don't ever do that. So he 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 pulls out with both hands ugh, a big jo a a big j a uh, he, a big jar, and uh, as he hands it to you, it's 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 you open it up and it he opens it up for you and it says it contains a sticky gel that vibrates in any in in time to any sound, and then he he snaps his fingers, and you see the jelly and you see the sticky gel vibrate every time every time he snaps his fingers. Tangent, Zell would have loved that. <laughs> oh my god. I'm sure there are a lot of people who would love that. Oh, the implications uh, of that item. Right. <laughs> and the applications. I actually I don't... Like it's probably a thing. I actually don't even yeah. know what you're talking about. What? What? The applications? Oh, of, like, gel that vibrates when you make noise? Is this a can I can I is this an already stream? Someone's can I singing it? and you have it on your genitalia. <clears throat> oh. <laughs> just saying. Oh. That's, that's or just shove it up the list. I'm just throwing it out there. Stick in a hole. I was always told I was overly innocent. <laughs> so you got us for. Yes. So he hands you the special gel, <laughs> the special <laughs> uh, inappropriate gel, <laughs> and uh, walks over to Tormund and. Find uses for this. <laughs> Uh, okay, so you did. Okay, uh, he walks over to Tormund, reaches into a third a, a third bag of holding that he that he that he just has on him, and gives you a a small ceramic disc that that makes and as he, and uh, he hands you a small a ceramic disc that make, and it makes small, quiet, soothing noises that are only audible to creatures within five feet of it. Most and uh, most beings find the gentle sounds to aid them in falling as asleep in unfamiliar places. We really knew that in real life. And the disc can be turned off, uh, turned on and off by tapping it gently. Damn, that is a neat. That is a neat thing. I like how you don't even know what's on your list. I. You think I got time to look at four thousand items? Yes. He's got a point. That's a lot of <laughs> items. What What I did was I I found a I found an awesome page that was um. Fuck! What was it? Uh, Tabletop trinkets by JJ. It's like a it's a Tumblr page where this person just made a a crap ton of D one hundred charts and and just 
it, it was really it was really okay. it, it it was like a huge extensive list of, of stuff i absolutely loved what he what he did also we need some background music i totally forgot we usually have background music oh uh, like, yeah oh, that's a nice item dave can play something can he though uh, I'm gonna quickly add some. I'm gonna quickly add some ambiance. Actually, what? I don't think I can put the bad bagpipes to the Discord soundtrack. No, no, you gotta play the xylophone on your chest. Oh yeah. A xylophone on your chest. Yeah. I mean, I guess it could. I guess it. Dead. That that is right. That is right. Just uh, pull the uh, <sighs> pull the bandages really tight, and you got a guitar. Oh yeah! <laughs> Clever. Probably turn into a one of them washboards too. You see, like the the bluegrass group. <laughs> what? what was that? <laughs> <laughs> He's Did like a one man band. Okay, here we go. Beautiful. All right. What am I hearing right now? Dave playing on his chest. Oh, I thought that was the music, you, the ambiance music. Uh, no. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, you're hearing it now. It's it's not even music. It's just it's just uh it's just it's. It's it's, it's just the sound of inside of a it's inside it's just the sounds inside of a ship. Um, Parnes will go over to Mugger next and pull in to, uh, reach into a fourth bag of holding that he has. What did you roll, Mugger? Mugger is Mugger uh, Panda or is Mugger? That's Panda. panda. Mugger okay. Is panda. I'm Kund. Some of you have your name. Some of you have your names displayed on, in roll twenty. Some of you just kept your regular one, so it's a bit confusing. I'll, I'll switch over to the. Other one. Ooh. Okay. It will. You just go as in the bottom. Uh. So uh, I'm on push to talk. So it was. All right. So he reaches into his bag and enough, pulls out a long recurve bow. And uh, where are you? There you are. I'm gonna I'm gonna copy and paste this one into your into your stuff. What is with me and getting items with he... long descriptions? He gives you a recurve bow with a with a, long. With, with a with a grinning horned skull of an imp mounted on the front of the bow's grip. The arrow shot through the skull's mouth bursts with a sh with a short-lived illusionary black fire the moment they pass through the imp's fanged teeth. So it's a really it's just a really dope bo uh, bow with some cool effects. Uh, but what is a composite bow considered? Would that be a short recurve? Yeah. yeah, I don't know. Do you think I'm some kind of weapons expert? Recurve is like a isn't it a smaller war bow? Isn't that what a recurve is? Yes, but they they hit harder than what kind of like what the Huns use on on horseback. Oh yes, yes. Come Very on, Mister Man, help me, help me. Yes, <laughs> I just told you yes. All right, looking it up. Uh, it's a it, it's a homebrew yeah. weapon for a composite bow. It's one d10 piercing. Nice. But do you have any arrows? <laughs> I don't need arrows. All right, and he goes over to Kund next. Dormund and, has arrows. And he hands you a glass ring, which appears in most respects very plain, but when but he when he when Professor uh, Parn shines uh, reflects it into the light, it shows colors that weave and dance within within the clear glass. Like it's a beautiful glass ceiling. Thank you. You're welcome. I'll, <laughs> uh, I will. I will. <laughs> oh, perfect for you too. Copy it. I'm I um, slowly slide it into my pocket and pretend like it's not there. <laughs> <laughs> and then he goes to over to Dave. Well, hello, Dave. How are you doing today? I um. Dave. Of course you are, sweetheart. Of course. I have something special for you. And he reaches into his a, another bag of holding and uh, gives you... <laughs> um, he, uh, 
he hands you a special piece of paper that says this <laughs> this is a special this is a special uh, invitation to my to my niece's ball that ended two years ago and then I am Dave. enjoy it translates to you screwed me old man and then he go <laughs> and then he goes back into into his uh into the bowels of the ship and uh goes back to doing to doing to doing parnsy things anyone want a heavy crossbow with no ammunition Dave drop puts the paper into his back pocket Tormund knows bows. I I didn't say bow. I said crossbow. Is it a crossbow? No, the weapon I had before then was a crossbow. But I'm oh. going to use the legendary fire. All right, nice. <laughs> uh, so that and that concludes all the stuff that I started with. Wow, that took a long that took a long time. So hey, we have toilet paper, guys. You're all one day away from uh, you're all one day away from your arrival in we in Westtown. Uh, basically, at this point, you guys can do anything that you want to do on the ship. And when you're when you're done, I uh, just uh, say so in the chat, and we'll move on to the next day. Question: Does Dave have any orders right now? Any orders? Uh, pretty much to to uh, what one of your orders is to uh, uh to observe the current bosun of the ship. And uh, and just and wa and watch him if he's doing any kind of repairs. But when not, just you know, just be into about. Do does any like okay? So previously we were using firearms, correct? In the in the world. Uh yes. Are there firearms on the ship? Uh technically, uh, every one of you should have at least one firearm. Should except Dave. Dave has no firearms. Dave wouldn't have a firearm. Mm -hmm. No. Would Can everyone choose what kind of firearm we have? Uh, a standard flintlock pistol. It is a, it is a D eight's worth of damage. Ammunition. Uh, round of bullets. How many? Let's say all of you have five. Uh, would this be considered a? Simple Marshall or anything like that, or is it more complicated? I would say ranged. Well, yeah, but oh, uh, I would say simple ranged. Simple ranged, um, okay. It doesn't require much to to fire a gun. Basically, I was asking if I, my. Uh... I don't guess I'm adding much. My... He wanted to know if he would be proficient. Yeah, I was wanting to know. Um, I would Which also. Um, yeah. me and Kund are proficient with firearms, even if they were classified as like a special class. It's like a bonus thing that the artificer. Well, gets. it's it's up to DM, of course, but. Yeah, yeah, it's it's an optional thing. It's optional rule firearm proficiency. I can that. show you if you want. I got the book open. I mean, it's it's something that you that I will say you don't have right now, but you can develop over time. Like consider it one of those role playing feats. But it's part of our class. Oh, it is. Oh, then never mind. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We get proficiency out of our class. Like it's Plus literally. Plus, I'm an artillerist. Fire. I literally make magic guns, so I feel like I'd have to understand it a little bit, right? All right. Yeah. Then okay, you guys have proficiency. <laughs> cool. I got a range right. weapon now. <laughs> and how how much ammo did you say we have? Uh, five bullets. And I, and I guess technically you would also have like a small sack of like gunpowder. Yeah. What would the effective range of these be? Effective range, I would say sixty feet. That'd be the longest. Yeah. Cool. After after Come after in. that after that shooting after that you'd be shooting at dis at disadvantage. Do you say it's a D eight? Yeah, it's a D8. So, like, it'd be, like, 60 and then, like, just do, like, 100, and if they're more than 100 feet away, you're basically not going to hit them. Uh, I wouldn't say you're not going to hit them. You're just going to shoot at disadvantage. Well, yeah like, yeah, like, 60 to 100, it would be disadvantage. After that, I, uh, I mean, I, I guess, I guess it'd be a case-by-case -case basis. I could, I could see us maybe trying to roleplay something else if you, if you make it cool enough. 
but I would disadvantage. And we add, do we add our decks to that since it's aiming? If you're proficient in it, yes, it would be it would be decks. Mm. Okay. I missed what determines whether or not we're proficient in it. Uh. You have to earn proficiency, except for the artificers, because they actually get it based on their class. Or if their class has it. Is it yeah. I would... I mean, it doesn't say anywhere in the swashbuckler thing, but I actually assume that swashbucklers would be proficient. But like I said... I would assume it. all of us all fit together. Practicing with this thing for months would be somewhat proficient with it. Well, you haven't been you haven't been practicing for months. You've been through you've been in like a handful of like three or four battles on the sea, but you're not you haven't. But since most of you have recently have not are not from the arc, you and especially with you, Tormund, you've focused more on uh, on on bows and and, oh, yeah. and such and melee combat. It's if if you want to get proficient in it, you're gonna have to you're gonna have to spend a bit more time. You're gonna have to spend some time practicing. And that would also probably come out of your pay since it takes gunpowder and balls to fire. I won't be too. Cr I won't be really crazy about like how how much gun on how much gunpowder you need, but uh, definitely the the ammunition. Definitely got to keep track of that. I'm gonna walk over to the orc and hand him my heavy crossbow. Dorman you says said thanks. you wanted this, right? Torman will try it out. Good luck getting bolts for it. I don't have them. Well, Braden is going to I'm gonna be going around to all the the guns in the deck and making them glow. Making them blow? Just glow. Oh, glow. You mean like you're gonna clean them? Yeah. All right. So you so you go around you go around to all the all the all the there's not really any cannons. There's more ballistas. Oh, yeah, ballistas. That's fine. So you, you go to the ballistas. You you get out your special artificer white wipey wipey cloth and you give them a good scrub down. <laughs> and are you, are you making them glow with like any magic or are you just really just cleaning them really good? Um, so th I'm just, these are large ballistas, right? Like large crossbows? Yeah, like huge right, ones. So whatever the round is that's in the crossbow currently, I'm going to use my... My magical tinkering to make the round glow. Ooh. Do it's like... a five-foot radius around it. Use it um, like a torchlight. Okay. So is there anything is there anything in particular that you have to do for that? No, I just have to have a, tool, a set of tools, and I have like five of them on me right now. All right, well then, yeah, you you get out your special set of tools. You get out your special you get out your special artist artist for wipey cloth that makes things shine, and you, and you get the and you get the tips of those ballista arrows are really good, like and it's 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 like it's like the sound of rubbing two pickles together. Um, you go to all the you go to all the arrows like the ones that are that are that are uh, that are loaded already and the ones that are just, that are on the stock like on um, on the uh, loading stock nearby, and you're just making them shine really nice, making making things look good, you know. If anyone looks over, I'm just gonna be like tracers. I am going to see him doing that, and it's gonna give me an idea. I'm going to use the same feature to add a visual effect to an object's surface and it's going to be a distance compared to angle scale on the side of the bow to compare oh. how far it is to how high up you should aim so like an aim assist okay so yeah that okay okay so you basically got an auto headshotter right there right <laughs> not so much it's more of like if the ship's 500 feet away shoot at this angle you I have a better chance of hitting. Okay. You know, they still do the side to side and they can not listen to <clears> it, <throat> but it's there for anyone who wants to use it. And is, and this is just like on top of it that you're, and you're putting it like on top of all the ballistas or? 
Yeah, yeah. It's just the static visual effect appears on one of the object's surfaces. The okay. effect can be a picture, up to 25 words of text, lines and shapes, oh. or as many elements as you like. All right. And you're, doing, and you're doing that to all of them? Yep. All right. Uh, you do just that. You leave... You... Leave your mark. You you leave this you do this really cool side side thing, and you, some some of the crew are are uh, gathering around it, being like, "Oh, this is really neat," and the, and uh, they, they some of them are looking really forward to like to the, to the next ship, ship battle that you're that we're all gonna have. They, some of them really can't wait to test it out. I'm gonna slap him in the arm and play him like good. You slap tracer rounds. We know where they are in the dark, and now we can hit them wherever they go. Wait, do, are you slapping panda? Are you? I mean, are you slapping yeah. mugger? Okay. Like you know how like two craftsmen like a, like look at each the good the craft and you're like that's that's a good idea. Okay. Um. I saw you being helpful and realized I could be too. I am Dave. He's just okay, walking so around. Just... Well, thank you. He's just walking around on the deck. Watching everyone. Around talking to himself. <laughs> Basically, <clears throat> watching people. Torment. Uh, Torment okay. goes to the front of the boat and pulls out his pan pipe and starts playing on it. All right. Uh, you want to make a performance check? Sure. <laughs> you play out that. You pull out that pan pipe and you and you and you're making some sweet, awesome music. Some of the some of the crew are definitely getting into it. Yeah, and uh, the, you're definitely you 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 see you see people smiling more. You see the you see you can see morale going up. It's a it's just a pleasant ship ride, you know, with the winds in your favor. The waves are pretty easy. The sky the sky is like open and blue, barely any clouds up there. If if there was ever if there was ever a perfect day for sailing, this would be it. Oh, so if the music starting, uh, I will going to say. Oh yeah. I can only do three of the bows. I can't do a fourth. I can't do all. Okay, so one of them is, one of them is going to be is going to be the uh, that third party controller that no one likes to play with when you're when you're when you're playing video games at a friend's house. There you go. Yeah, pretty much. The one that got thrown against Player the wall. Player four, get in there. <laughs> Dave joins Carmon to play music because music brings out his soul. Man, I really wish I would have taken the time to learn this ocarina. <laughs> it's really right now. <clears throat> Bam. Do you remember how to hold it, right? Jesus. We have a pan flute and a bagpipe being played on the front deck. This is hilarious. Well, you, you might want to throw a... Uh, I'm at the DM, so I won't tell you. You have to throw a performance. What do you... What are you? What are you trying? <laughs> what are you trying to do? Play the bagpipe. Dave is trying to join me with uh, his bagpipe. Oh, I mean, uh, oh, uh, so, oh, yeah, so Dave is trying to do it. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, I, I really hope he's not going to sing. <laughs> I mean, uh, it's, I mean, Dave, Dave tries to play. Uh, tries to play. I mean, uh, he. He tries his hardest, but you know, it, 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 your your good playing is overshadowing his undead, not good playing. Yeah, basically, twenty one is a two point one. <laughs> oh wait, you rolled? Oh, you rolled. <laughs> well, damn. I don't know what to do now. Just kidding. Flip that around. <laughs> You're gonna have to do that at disadvantage. I'm gonna say, based off based off based off how you've how you've said that he's going to how, on how Dave acts and and is. Well, son of a bitch. That was almost better. <laughs> Uncharacteristic of of Dave and his and his uh and his undead brains, uh, he's somehow you're you're playing a pan flute too or no bagpipes bagpipes Backpipe. you're playing the bag and uh, where uh, are they're 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 I, I I thought you had a I thought we had a conversation about them being in your lungs they're not in your lungs are they? they? Are. Okay, well he's just you're. <laughs> <laughs> That that's kind of what's happening here. It's beautiful. It's beautiful pan flute music uh, company with beautiful bagpipe music that's literally coming out of his mouth. This is a fun ship to be on. I'm half tempted Here's to go over and give him a baseline beach. Are like... bagpipes ever good? I know they actually are. I've, I've, I'm. I come from. 
I come from a Scottish background. I believe bagpipes are fucking beautiful, but <laughs> when done right, oh, yeah, but it's the old oxymoron bagpipe <laughs> music. All right, so this is the uh, I want I want to let you know Don't hate him. this is the uh, this is the inside uh, what you're seeing right here is the the interior of the ship miss which is missing uh, which is still missing uh, one which is still missing one uh, level uh, I I don't want to I don't want to like uh, I don't want to like try to make it any bigger without overshadowing anything and I don't want to move anything while everything is while you're all on there but uh, it also looks like part of a thunderwater <laughs> basically uh no well, no 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 uh, that's the what the part that looks underwater is on the same level is on the same uh, level as you guys are at on top of the ship. It's just the inside. Gotcha. Mm, mm. Got it. Got it. And uh, of course, there's the sleeping deck uh, on the right side, and then there's like a, a the bottom storage. I don't like that. I don't like that storage. So it's gonna be. It's, I'm gonna consider it much larger than it is. And uh, right. there's also and there's also a third floor for like for like cabins for passengers. There are, there are, there are there are a few passengers on the ship. Well, as you can tell with the crazy darker. Are there any crew members playing dice anywhere? Uh, yeah, you can typically find some crew members uh, in their off time playing some dice in, in the in the cabinish area. Uh, like there's like there's like a small open common area for like for the for the for the crew to, to like hang out. Uh, it would be it wouldn't it wouldn't be shown. It wouldn't be shown there. It's it's in the, okay. it's in the one with the cabins. It's also where the the cook and the doc and the and the and the doctor would be as well. Well, I'd go down there and I'd play some dice. Just All right. To... Try to get the crew, get to know the crew. I, I wouldn't, I, I would not cheat <laughs> as I got to know the crew. <laughs> All right, so yeah, I mean, you've gotten to know the crew a little bit. Like, like you, you've been on the ship for two months, mind you. You've, you've definitely already played dice with them a few times. As to whether or not you've cheated them, chosen not to cheat the entire time, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. So I'm gonna uh, be really uh, playing with my dominoes that I got. <laughs> All right, so um, so uh, with uh, Brayden, you are you're you're playing you're playing some dice games. Uh, let's play. Are, are you are you considered proficient with the gaming sets? Yes, I believe I am. All right. Um, I let me double check that. Uh, I actually have to look at my background because I don't think I put it on my character sheet accidentally, so I have to look at my background. Well, while you're figuring that out, sorry about. That. We got Elatrix. Am I saying your name right, by the way, Elatrix? Yeah. yeah. So Elatrix breaks out her her fun set of dominoes. It's a, it's a set of it's a set of, of about uh, sixty dominoes, and you're and you're just having fun mm. setting them up, knocking them down. It's it's a it's a fun addicting game. I, I don't know I don't know why we still don't play. I just, I don't know why I got rid of my domino set when I was ten years old. It's a it's you're just you're having a, you're having a good time. You never you never played with stuff like this before. Thanks for getting that for me, Sonya. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, did you find anything, uh, uh, yeah. Brayden? Technically, I'm technically there's nothing about it being um, proficient with it, but at the same time, uh, dice is kind of a uh, like, um, like rolling dice is kind of like a dex check, is the way I understand it. I would say it's. Uh, um, I would almost say it's like a luck thing, but uh, either, well, because I, I, one of the characters I looked up, it's it is. Um, sometimes it's dex, sometimes it's charisma, depending yeah. on what kind of dice game you're playing. Yeah, it's either charisma For or dex, and then if you're cheating, it's like sleight of hand. <clears throat> Liar's <laughs> dice is exception. considered charisma. So. So I ain't familiar. Yeah. I ain't familiar with any dice games besides craps. Uh, yeah. So, so it, it we'll really just say the, the dice game you, we've, we'll you say play. we'll say uh, you're playing a dex based dice game. So roll a make it make a dexterity check. All right. Um, oh wait, wait. Before we do that, uh, how much how much are you willing how much are you willing to put down? Well, it depends on if I have the money I still have in my uh, pocket or if we're using the barter system. Uh, these people are offering up uh, copper pieces. Alright, so... Which, keep in mind, did you hold um, a lot of weight in this world? Yeah. Um, I... I'll 
be doing copper. I just uh, have to. I forgot to do. I forgot to change the gold pieces I kept for my character and transfer them down to smaller bit down to copper. So. Um, I mean, we can say that we can say that uh, in, in when you were in Balmar, you had a chance to meet with one of the bigger banks and totally screw them over by essentially handing them a hundred dollar bill and asking back and asking for pennies back. Well, <laughs> I, I you know, well, the thing is, is that my character bought a bunch of daggers, from the uh, places, and the change he got <clears throat> back from buying a bunch of daggers would have broken it down to copper. Is the way I'm playing it. I just forgot to actually do the the transfer. All I'm right. still sitting at three gold in my inventory, so I need to actually do the, the transfer. All right. Um, so. But uh, um, well, while you're doing the, well, while you're doing the transfer, uh, you got you got a bit of an interaction with them, like, uh, like one of the crewmates is like, oh, Braden, you're for, you're down for another game right here. We gotta we gotta we gotta pop that's uh twenty copper that's twenty copper solid, pretty pretty big one. Are you in this time? Uh, of course I am. All right. Then they they roll they uh so what we're gonna do is we're gonna we're gonna roll dice against each other and whoever but you get to add your you get to add your dex modifier and uh, I'll say that the sailor that you're uh there's two sailors you gotta beat and they also yeah. and they and they will also have their own dex mod of uh we'll say plus one also I also I gotta get my own dice roller out because there's no way in hell I'm rolling on roll twenty with all you plebs. <laughs> So whenever you're ready to roll. Yeah. Uh, okay. Um, I'll be rolling with. Uh, it's the same no matter what way I do whether I do shift, dex, or sleight of hand. But I'll be rolling with sleight of hand. Oh. Like shoot. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. So two of them. Uh, so wait, does that mean that you're cheating then? Yes. Okay. <laughs> if, uh, I de if I roll straight dex, it's that means I'm not cheating. If I'm rolling sleight of hand, that means I'm cheating. All right, then it's the same. It's the same exact freaking thing, except I'm using technically using deception. I do slide of hand. So, <laughs> well, that doesn't matter with these guys. Their perception is garbage. So they one of them rolls, and it's a pr and and they and they get a they get a fifteen with their roll. Uh, I'll just use the actual d twenty numbers. The the other one that that I was talking to you rolls, and they roll a nineteen, and it's like, oi, good luck trying to beat that one. And then you roll a twenty two, and they're like, oh. And uh, you just and you won twenty copper. Okay. Uh, Alright. Sorry, I just there. So, is there anything else anyone is looking to do on this ship before uh, before we before we you finish off day one and make it to West Town? I'm good to go. Good. As Thanks. am I. Well, um, I will say over the long rest, I um, transfer my magical infusion of repeating shot over to the Reeker. But... Oh, okay. Gotcha. <laughs> So you go through you go through the you go through these events uh, you go you, and you have your you have your nice easy day of sailing, uh, at the uh, po uh you all you all have your night shift you all have your night shift duties um but it most it's a, it's so easy that you, most of you get to you get to sleep pretty well, uh the morning comes by you finish off your sailing you finish sailing to Westfall um let's see here uh Dwarven I want you to roll a d12 okay. <clears throat> All right, so you get sailing event number two out of twelve. All right. Oh, not that one. So, uh, in contrast from in contrast from the day that you had yesterday, which was very which was very which was very sunny, bright, easy waves, good wind. The, today the wind is a bit more harsher. It's very cloudy in the skies. It's not raining right now, and the waves are are a bit more harsh. Nothing nothing too treacherous, but th things have definitely taken a turn from really nice weather to more downtrodden weather. 
You, uh, but you still manage to see some. But uh, the rest of this trip there, uh, the you don't you don't really see anything ha happening in the waters besides more besides more heavy waves. But you do see a a, a pack of seagulls flying through the air, through the air, uh, flying over flying actually over the ship. And uh, who's currently on the sh who's currently uh on deck right now? I would be. As would I. Yeah, what I I would be too. Dave's always Dave's just following some people around, so they're on deck. He's on deck. Okay, uh, so everyone who everyone who's currently on deck uh gets a little seagull poop on them. Okay. It's not not a whole not a whole lot. Just you know, just a inconvenience inconvenience of the day. I'm just gonna prestidigitation mine off. Ooh. All right. By the way, how do you how do you how do you roleplay that stuff? Because you, your magic, because like I was saying, your magic works differently from from how wizards and sorcerers and warlocks do it. Um. So for that one, I um I have like a bag of items more or less, and each item has like not a spell stored in it, but like for like certain cantrips, I I pull out my um, which which tools is it? I pull out my tinker's tools, and there's like a brush for, um, like, like cleaning and um, like getting dust out of like small parts, and I um, focus energy into it, and without actually touching it, I dust across my arm where it landed, and it just like washes off like hydroplaning. Okay. So, <clears throat> very very simple cleaning process then. And all of you, uh, all the rest of you. I mean, you know, there's there's water everywhere. You guys got you guys got the option to clean. Cool. Also, also that reminds me. Um, your main method for I should say is your main method for I I for uh staying hydrated on the ship because you know ships, you're surrounded by salt water. You not you don't have a lot of clean water to drink. So you all there, there's a. You, you're you're gonna be you're gonna be uh, staying hydrated the the way classic sailors stay hydrated with a cup of rum every day. Um, before we get too far, before we go too far, I am using my uh, primeval awareness to talk to my little seagull friend. <laughs> Hello, seagull. Would you sing song for everyone? Huh. You like play music for it. <laughs> Let me look. Get out. And take. Uh, go ahead and take out the pan flute and pay, play just like a little bit of a, uh, like a little bit of snippet of a song and say, you can use this to start with. Let me look up seagull stats really quick. And also, I do have a steel defender, also known as a robot pet. I do recall this. That yeah. is <clears throat> basically a miniature dragon turtle. Gotcha. Which I say miniature dragon turtle because dragon turtles are gargantuan. <laughs> but yeah. this thing is big enough that I can sit on its back. Gotcha. But yeah, yeah, you, you, you've you've just had that with you the entire time, right? Yeah, yeah, I've had that for I think as long as I've been on the boat. I just forgot to bring it up, and I just I can't find a picture other than the dragon turtle, so that's what I was gonna go with. Gotcha. All right, so yeah, you you were able to talk to the seagull, and it's a it's feeling in a it's in a it's a bit in a downtrodden mood as well from the weather, so it decides to ob oblige your request, and it lets out a. Uh, and then it and then it kind of and then they kind of get the rest of the seagulls to like call with them like, and it's it's you got I mean it's just seagulls calling but there's a bit of a rhythm to it, and uh, it's it seems it's and you're playing the pan flute now right? Yep. Uh, 
We'll, say, we'll we'll roll we'll roll with your role that you with your performance check that you had yesterday. So you're pl- you're able to play the, the pan flute and 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 pretty good cohesion with the seagulls uh, cawing, and it definitely uh and it's it sounds pretty dope as fuck, man. Uh, it's definitely up it's definitely uplifting the uh the a bit of the sour mood from all the uh from all from the from the turn in weather that you've had today. <clears throat> Dorman's happy. I found a better picture. It's it's closer to a tortoise than a turtle. Oh, gotcha. And uh, it takes you it takes you like two hours into the day to make it to to make it to West Town. And uh, upon arriving, you know you you make it to the you make it to port, and uh, and and uh, different from how uh, Ludwig has commanded uh, has commanded some uh, a, a fair amount of people to stay on the ship this time. Uh, this time he he says that everyone's free to roam uh, West Town today. But they must be back by nightfall. So what? So you, you're all free. To, you're all free to get off the ship. Uh, you see, you see the, you see the town in front of you. Uh, there's a can full of docks. You're the only ship at, at, at port. <clears throat> there's a small dirt path that leads that leads uh, forward about maybe a, a thousand feet or so, and you see a just a like a like a circle of buildings. You know, some like some of them you can recognize like a, a church. One of them looks like one of them looks like a big town hall building. Uh, you definitely see houses like uh, st- scattered about, like not just in the not not just in the, within the little circle air, a uh, circle of like buildings, but also like scattered uh, on the outside of this little circle, and as well as like a couple of bigger buildings. You you can you see you see like a you see a store that says uh, what's this fucker's name. You see a building that says such and such is a uh, general store. Where are you? Uh, Tanlin's gen- general store. And uh, and that, that's about it. Whatever, whatever you want to find out, whatever else you want to find out, you're going to have to explore yourself. But you have free range to explore the town of West, of, of uh, West Town. I, uh... Dave is on the boat unless someone's taking him with him. Uh, you... Oh, okay, you would be, uh, you would be traveling with Ludwig, I, I, I would say. Also, we should probably switch okay. from the, from the ship over to, uh, back to Paralim. And and also I will say that you do notice that uh that over like as as you've been traveling with Ludwig longer and longer he's been getting more becoming more and more of an angry guy, but today today he's got today he's a uh, and today he's uh, just stomping off into town with his posse and Dave of course right behind him, and uh they they disappear into the circle of buildings uh, and now it's all you. Well, I, I I turn to the rest of the group that's still with me because of course <clears throat> Dave has gone off. With the group, <clears throat> So, do you want to find a tavern or a place where we can maybe find supplies? Ludwig doesn't give us free reign of the everything on the ship. Dorman make music. He happy. True. Supplies would be good. Yeah. I mean, me and Kun don't really drink or eat. I really breathe, but um. <laughs> You don't eat. You don't do much of that living stuff that most people do. Uh, it takes too much time. Is overrated. And I think of at least one person that I would wish would stop, but that's just So, I come with birds done wow. singing. Gross. How big is this town? Did you say? Uh, it's like a. It's. It's on the it's on the bigger end of small. Like it's a town that's that's been it's been starting to develop. Uh, it's it's uh it's 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 got it's got some qualities that that are good that it's got some qualities that are good for exporting in the in the arc. It's got it's got some trade value. It it doesn't have all it doesn't have like of course the comforts that you'd find in a city, but it does have it does have the basics that most people need to function in a society. I'm going to sit on the ground and. Pulling out my tinker tools, start um, carving runes into the back of my hand and infusing them with my energy. And I'm going to ritual grass, detect magic, and just go for a walk around town. Carving runes into the back of your hand. 
Yeah, like instead of ruining their ground, I carve it into the metal on the back of my hand. Like I have like a, basically, if you have you watched a Full Metal Alchemist. Gotcha. I, I was trying to think of a clever joke about you being an emo kid, but uh, I couldn't think of anything. Oh uh, well, I was thinking more like I have like all the runes for my spells carved into my hand. Yeah, and, and then I just <laughs> trace the lines that I need for specific spells spells to cast those spells specifically. All right, and uh, basically, the this rune is giving you uh, detect magic on you, right? Yes. All right. As a ritual cast. What is the range of uh, of uh, detect magic? If I'm not mistaken, it's thirty feet. But like I said, I'm walking through town with it. Gotcha. Just trying to just trying to give myself a grasp of like. If you do encounter anything magical, like how close you actually have to be. Oh, I'm gonna go with him. All right. Well, I'm gonna go head to the general store, take <clears throat> torment, and if Electrix would just come with, uh, we can go to the general store. I'll come with. Okay. Check it out. All right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I kind of take a short bow that I have on me. It's unstrung and a quiver. I'm like, I really don't need these. It's not my style. I just happen to have them. So I'll see if anyone at this general store or, or, or other place needs them. Gotcha. And uh, I'll, I take arrows. Oh, oh, very well. I, I twenty my quiver of twenty arrows to torment. And uh, what is Tormund going to be doing? Tormund mindlessly wander. Mindlessly wander. He would find. All right. He would. So you, all right. So all of you, now that all of you have your things that you're doing, let's start with. Uh, let's start with the people. Well, let's start with those of you going to the general store. <clears throat> So you guys make it to to Tan to Tan to, to Tanlin's store. You open you open the you open the door. The cre it's, it kind of creaks a bit, and you see just a mishmash of like of like stuff all over the place. It's it's a pretty disorganized store, uh, and you you hear you hear like a you hear a voice coming from the back like ah yes hello, someone come in. Uh, yes, good person. Um, I am here to. See what I can do to for trade on this uh, short bow, or if you know of someone who would rather take the short bow, if you are not interested. Um, yes, let me let me let me get let me uh just get to the front. And there you hear you hear like the pitter pat pitter patter of a couple steps. Uh, you see like a you see like a you can see in the back like a small box getting shoved like a get, getting pushed behind it is a gnome. And uh, uh once the he once he reaches to the, reaches to the front of the front of the uh, store, he gets on top of the box and says, "All right, so you want to show me a bow?" Yeah, it's just a simple short bow. It's a good short bow, mind you, but a simple <clears throat> short bow, and I'd like to get you know get its worth in goods. All right, this is the one that you got from Parnes, right? Or is no, this, some... this is just oh, a oh. that came with my character creation, and I meant to get rid of it, but the damn thing's worth 25 gold, and with the way that the money's transferred in this thing, I'm like, I'm not going to try to transfer that gold into copper, Got... that's way too much weight. Gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> so I'm like, I'll just wait till the first town to break in. <laughs> All right. All right, then. Let me take a look at it. Seems like a pretty good simple bow. Nice, nice detail. Point, point, point. Do you have arrows to go with it? Uh, no, someone, uh, a friend of mine needed the arrows. He, he's a good, he's a good bowman, and he needs the arrows. All right I then. Need the bow. Uh, are you looking for coin for it, or are you looking for, or are you looking for trade? Mm, coin, if I, if you don't have anything to interest me in trade. All right. Well, if you're interested in trade, because <clears throat> like most people would prefer to, prefer to trade. If I mean, most people would yeah. would grab coin if they could, but they, but if they, but they, and they'd prefer to keep it if they can. Uh, let's see here. Uh, he he pulls out like a little in, like a little inventory list. Uh, don't have any paper, so this is my paper. Uh, yes, uh, my inventory here. Uh, I can give you. Uh, I can give you five jars of molasses. Uh, 
two pounds of dried fruit and uh, and five pounds of beans if you want. Which which would equate to like uh, about which would equate to like about a silver. I think we need more than that. Mm. This is a good bow. It's a simple bow, but it's a good bow. Like you I said. We... Hmm. Make a uh, persuasion check. I just did. did. Oh, uh, <laughs> so I, sorry. I, I go back. I go back and forth between having Discord up on the screen and, and having Roll Twenty up on the screen because this is fine. also this is I being recorded. Fine. Uh, and your roll is, well, Four. son of a bitch. <laughs> there you go. There you go. I'm like, hmm. all right. I'm a charismatic son of a bitch. <laughs> all right. All right. All right. I'll give you a an extra pound of jalapenos. Not enough spice going. Not, not enough spice going around in the arc. And uh, how about? Hmm. I'll throw in some. I'll throw in five pounds of salmon, but no more than that. Sam, salmon, by the way, is like the cheapest form of like. Uh, is like the lowest. Is like the lowest form of boat food. It's like it's like the poor man's food. Yeah. How much fruit did he give? Like out of character, how much fruit did he give us? Uh. You, shit! You want me to remember the things I say to you? Uh, yeah. You're the DM. Five jars of molasses, uh, okay. two pounds of ba of dried fruit, a pound of beans, <clears throat> five pounds of salmon, and a and a pound of jalapenos, which would overall equate to about uh, which would overall equate to about a silver and and a fi and a five copper. Right. Or actually, no, it'd be it would be a silver and ten copper. Sorry. Yeah. I think I'll take that if you can add a bit more fruit. Fruit's always important to a sailor. Hmm. I don't think I don't think I can budge anymore on this one. I mean it's just a bow. You are correct. I, mean, I wish I'd written all this down. <laughs> I'm like trading some of it out for more fruit because I know fruit's really important to sailors. Hmm. Do you have any water um, barrels? Uh, yeah, I got a couple. I got about five water barrels. Water barrels would also be important. But I've already given it as much as I can for this short bow. Yes, but we're wanting to trade some of what you've offered out for barrels. I'm trying to think of what. Ah, okay, to... okay. <clears throat> yes. So uh, he looks. He look. He uh, looks over at the barrels. Um. Hmm. I can probably get rid of a. Uh, I can probably get rid of a pound. Uh, the pound of beans to give you about a. Uh, hmm. Uh, let's say ten water skins worth of water. Good. It is just a. It is a good. It's a good bow, but a simple bow. That sounds a good trade, sir. All right then. All right then. It sounds like a deal. He he reaches out his uh, little his little small gnome hand to shake your hand, and then he goes back and he he pitter patters around the store like eh, and just he finds it. He finds the stuff that he needs. He hands it all to you. You ha and you give him the bow in return. I'm gonna have to clean that up later. Uh, and you and you got yourself a deal. Sorry, could I ask you? I have the five pounds of dried fruit and water skins. Five pounds of dried fruit. Five pounds of dried fruit. The ten water skins. Five jars of molasses. A pound of jalapenos. Salmon. Five pounds of salmon. And if I ever do make a mistake, I, I will, I, I will, I, I do rewatch these after after they happen. I, I would correct it later. Yeah, no, that's and, fine. It's just any I, boiling I peanuts. It. Say what? Huh? Any boiling peanuts? I mean, well, you're not there. No, no, I'm just saying. <laughs> that another one of them. Is it, eh. 
Alright. Molasses, dried fruit, water skins, jalapenos, and uh, salmon. Or salmon. Alright. Alright, you got it. <coughs> Meanwhile. <laughs> Meanwhile. In a, in a calm little alleyway inside the town. Torman sits down and pulls out a little bitty miniature skeleton figure bound by a piece of copper wire and starts playing his pan flute to it. Alright, so you you're you're un you're un you're unbonding the copper wire from the from the mummy then? No, no, I'm leaving it. Oh, okay. Wait. Wait. I, I pull out I am pulling it out. I've carried it with me. I pulled out the humanoid <clears throat> skeleton bound with a copper wire, and I am um, I put it down in front of me and just started playing my my flute. Gotcha. Okay. So you sit there, you start playing your fruit. You, I mean, you, you're not your fruit, your flute. <laughs> and I, it's, that banana. <laughs> uh, and it's you, you're you're just having you're just having a, a nice time. you're just having a nice time, and uh, as you're sitting there, <clears throat> let's see here. As you're sitting there, uh, you notice a you notice a woman uh, walk by, uh, dressed in uh, dressed in like a she has she has like light armor on her and like a red tabard, uh, tabard with a hammer on the front, a, a big a big a big ass hammer on the front. Uh, she's also she also has a hammer on her back as well. And you uh, notice and uh, you uh, you're from this land, so you know that she is part of the of the builders faction, based off based off what you're seeing. Uh, she walks over. She walks over to your over your way and and, and uh, looks at and notices your. He, she notices your 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 flute playing up first, and then she and then she uh, looks down at the at the copper wire mummy and says and says, "Where did you get that?" I have found it. It was on old master. And that's and that's where you're going with. That's how you got it. That's how I got it. All right. Who is? I, your... I took from old master when when he died. Who was your master? I'm gonna take off my glasses for this one. I gotta go find my bio. <laughs> and they say uh, I'm. And they say I'm. Uh, and they say I'm ill prepared. Ray, Reynaldo Gentries. Reynaldo Gentries. Never heard of him, or her. Is it her? Her. That's right. Never heard of her. Do you know how she got this? I do not. She has always had it. Mm. Till I have it. Interesting. And she reaches into her bag and pulls out a uh, a hand that's also bound in copper wire, not tight, not as tightly bound as yours. And uh, you notice that the hand is actually twitching a little bit. And she says, "I got this one. I got I got this from the I got this from a woodsy that I killed." And you you know that the woodsy are a are a sect of druids that are all over the ark. And not and not and you you look at you look at the you notice the, she notices the mummy and notices the hand that they're both about, about, about a copper wire, and she and she says that and she says that your master must have must have had something against must have killed a woodsy for this one. Mm, could be, he kill, she kills many things from florist, orc, animal, woodsy. Hmm. Very interesting. No kill, Tormund. Tormund, not Woodsy. <laughs> no, 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 uh, no, no. I don't. I don't believe you. Of course not. Of course not. You, if if the Woodsy knew you had this, I don't think they'd be happy with you. Why? He's skeleton. Skeleton, yes, but typically, typically the Woodsy, they like to they they like to they like to bound their dead. They when when the Woodsy die, they like to bound their dead. But this in particular, copper mummified copper hand, skeleton. Copper. Huh. I can tell you that the builders that the builders would greatly appreciate this. Okay. Would you be willing to would you be willing to would you be willing to, to would you be willing to hand it over to the builders? Will builders give me something? Uh what do you want? Torment like all sorts of things. Well that's very fucking specific. I know. <laughs> Torment like things. Uh, how about we get you a, uh, how would you like a nice bucket of meat? 
She's she's looking. She's offering this to you like stereotypically. Tormund, not dumb. Tormund, just in, unintelligible, okay. unintelligent. Okay. 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 Un 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 ungent. Ungent. <laughs> I, I know you're trying to stay in character. I'm just trying to understand it in, in reality, too. All right, all right, all right. Um, how about this? The the builders would... the uh, This will this will definitely gain you favor with the builders, for sure. Like, we, we would definitely look upon you... We would definitely, definitely look upon you kindly as a half-orc anywhere you go. But also, we'll give you... And she notices your bow. Like, that's a nice-looking bow. That, that's a nice-looking crossbow that you got there. You oh. want heavy crossbow? No, 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 no. I mean, I. How, how about this? And she offers off. And she's she offers up a, a a small. She offers up a small potion, that says this potion, can actually help can actually help you use that crossbow crossbow a little better temporarily, temporarily. It's a it's a it's basically a potion of a plus one dexterity and it lasts and it lasts for five minutes. Tormund no need potion. Tormund have no bolt. I thought you said he had bolts. Then nope, no bolts for the crossbow. Well then, how about I give you some bolts? Hmm. I'll give you some bolts. I'll give you. I'll give you thirty bolts and the potion. And the builders will look upon you favorably wherever you go. Okay. Tormund find fair. Okay, so you hand over the 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 skeleton wrapped in copper wire. You get uh, I said thirty bolts, right? Mm-hmm. And you also get the you also get the the potion of plus one dexterity. Works for five minutes. And uh, the lady the lady is ha is happy with the deal. Thank you so much. My name is Cammy, by the way. You can use my you can use my name and you can mention my name to any of the builders if you ever need help. Hi, friend Tammy. Cammy. Cammy. Thank you, friend Cammy. I play flute now. Of course, of course. You play that flute really good. And then, she's, then she turns around and walks away. And now we got our two warforged that are wandering about aim aimlessly looking for magical items. And also trying to find a name. A name? Karas. The oh. magical gnome tinker, I think he was gnomish. Gotcha. Yes. Uh, it wasn't gnome. It was halfling. Um, same. Thing. Close uh, enough. There's at least a, there's at least a solid foot and a half difference between the two of them. Hey. <laughs> uh, so you you're so are you like asking people about Karis, or are you just or are you just looking around? Well, we're, I'm looking around for magical things, but I'm also, like, if anyone seems, like, overly interested in us, I'm gonna, like, walk up to them overly interested in them. So, no one walks up to you overly interested? I mean, you're... It's not often that two Warforged just walk into town. Uh, yeah, I'm not saying that they, like, walk up to us. I'm saying, like, if they look at us and, like, give us a look, I just, like, I walk up and I'm like, hi! Uh, Can so... I interest you in some knowledge? Okay, so, um... You so you, <laughs> you 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 do notice people looking at you a bit a bit curiously, and of course you approach them as you as you as you said you would, and you is that what you literally say? Can I interest you in some knowledge? Well, uh, I I I I say trade for knowledge, you know what they know for what we know, sort of thing. All right, uh, and uh, the, the the you you approach uh you approach a. A and a, a, a nice uh you for, at first you approach uh a high elf a uh like not high elf uh just a, a human couple that are just that are just walking about and you like they look at you curiously you approach them can I can I give you uh can I exchange knowledge for knowledge kind of deal and they uh and they look at and they both like oh you can talk technology's gotten amazing around here oh we aren't from around here you're not. Wait. No, uh, me and my brother came from far away. From far away, uh, far away like Kirkwall, perhaps. But at this point, you know Kirkwall is like the is like the second is like the second uh, biggest city in in uh, in the Ark. 
farther. Farther. Are you, are you from? Are you, are you not from the Ark at all? No. Fascinating. But that gonna cost you. I'm gonna put my hand on his shoulder and like, in reserve motion, like he's giving way too much information. That's fascinating. So you're not one of Karis. So you're not one of Karis's in inventions, are you? No, we're actually here looking for him. Oh well. Uh... Why do I do this? I'm sorry. <laughs> Give us some knowledge. Uh, what 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 do you want to know? Where, where is Karis located? We've never met Karis before. We don't know where he is. So he's not here. What's your name? Uh, my name is uh Bill, and uh the and the woman says, and I'm and I'm a uh, uh, Sarah. Okay. Um follow up question. And out of character I'm gonna ask this before I ask that question. Do they have any magic items on No, I, I would have let you know that. Okay. I just checking. <laughs> um Do are there any like cool things like us here? Not like us, like us, but like magical. Uh, it was like uh, word it uh, exactly. So that's how you word it, like mat, like like us, like magical. Yeah, like us, but not exactly like us, but mat, like like magical. Um, automatons, brother. They they look back at each other. No, not automatons. Like like that's the part I didn't mean. I meant the magical part. They they they. They look back and forth at each other like automatons, like, uh, and they they say, uh, "Yeah, there's something here like you. I don't know about magical though. We keep hearing about this thing called science here. It sounds pretty. It sounds like a form of magic, but isn't." Oh, science is amazing. That's what we. That's what we keep getting told. Uh, and then they they uh they say uh they say uh, they point over in the direction. Oh look, there it is, the thing that that reminds us of you. And you see like a you see like a big machine, like a probably the size of my pan of my pantry doors of my pantry doors right there. It's got like big it's got like big ass feet that 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 uh very flat. It's it looks to be it looks to be made of like a bronze sort of metal. It it moves very mechanical, like ear, ear. And it's got it's got it's got a uh, hands that kind of move uh, back and forth like that. It's got a flattened face with a like like uh, imagine what you would see like a vent uh, over its eyes, and you see like and you see like red coming from underneath it, and you also see like uh, a small amount of smoke coming from its back. Oh, that's that's good science. Yeah, that's uh, that's one of our town's protectors, invented by Karis, actually. So Karis is in this there. town. <laughs> one at a time. Yeah. What'd you say? So Karis is in town. Uh, no, no. Karis has created. Uh, Karis is a is a man that has created some very unique uh, robotic and uh, robotic inventions from this from this science. And uh, this, that, and uh, one of the things that he's done is create uh, robotic protectors to keep us safe from uh, from, a lot, from a lot of threats out there. He said he uh, never came here, but he sent he sent uh, one of his creations to us. Thank you for the knowledge. I feel this trade has been thick. Uh, sure. Yes. And I'm and... just gonna go to where Kund is after he's. A fair bit away. Oh yeah, like the like the human couple walks away. I'm gonna go take a look at the the other robot. <laughs> All right, and uh, Dragon. Just a quick aside: while that while that's happening, I go back to the ship and drop my stuff off because I just did the math and all that crap you gave me, and that almost put me off. <laughs> <laughs> all right, gotcha. <laughs> Like I, my car max car rate's one fifty, and I'm at one forty-seven point six. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. 
um and is that is that also like uh counting like uh because i do believe that the amount that you carry increases with strength which actually i don't think you have any of them do you yeah it, like if your strength is 10 so your modifier is zero your strength your carry capacity is 150. gotcha so and um <laughs> so uh mugger is going to no kund mm-hmm kund is going to check out the uh the the, the bronze robot thingy town defender yeah Okay, so you go inspect that. You go and inspect the town defender. It uh, st it's it stops in its tracks. It's not really it's not really uh reacting to your presence per se. It looks to be it looks to just be looking around, per se, and then it just stops in motion. And it, you hear you hear a lot of mechanical noises. And as it's like, it's it's like moving its head like, and then it, and then it doesn't really it doesn't really move at all. So you go to and you're going to inspect it. Uh, is there anything in particular that you're trying to ascertain from it? I'm trying to find out uh, what's its style of motion. Is it legs? Is it tracks? Um, what kind of power supply is it running? Steam? Is it sounds or some kind of engine? Uh, yeah. So I, I'd say based off based off the stuff that you can figure out, based because you are a machine yourself, you notice that it's uh it's it's steam powered. Like you like when you when you inspect its back, you see that the smoke is coming from actually a, a big burning vent. You can actually you can actually see like you can actually see like the the black coal. You can actually see like a not like coals, but you see like something burning, like like flit, like really hot, like a, like a, almost imagine like a super hot metal inside, and it seems like that is burning something very minuscule inside. That's kind of that's keeping it running. So steam power. Um, I'm gonna look for a, uh, a vent of some sort that would get resources because it's gonna need something to burn off in order to make steam. Uh, so you look around and uh, you don't really see any vents. You the only the only in the only ends that you see is just where you where you saw where you saw that it was coming from the uh, the the the, uh, the 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 steam coming from. Hmm. Okay. I mean, I'm pre I'm pretty smart, so I would I would I would think that it would still need something because steam is generated by you know water being boiled so it has to fill up at some point so i'm gonna follow it around for a little bit and see and ask uh booger here if uh it's magical uh he it does not he does not detect any magic coming from it okay no um, magic that is pure science that's i'm gonna yeah. technically fancier than us so Listen. with the, how about you make an investigation check uh okay. yeah With our brains combined? Yeah. Not, not so much. <laughs> so you, so with that, you just, you, you be able to, you're able to figure out the basics of how it's working. You just can't really figure out like how it's, how it's able to keep running without, without something new being added to it. It's patrolling though, right? It's patrolling. I yes. am writing okay. all of this down in a book. I'm writing it down. Yeah. Okay. I'm actually writing it down too. <laughs> Good note taking. Um, I'm gonna give you. Wanna, I'm gonna give you both double. I'm gonna give you po both. Like you all start off with inspiration, but I'm gonna give you both. I'm gonna give you both extra inspiration for that. Okay. Uh, I want to follow it for a little bit as it's doing its patrols. All right. I'm looking for uh, some kind of dock that it's going to after X amount of time or something. I, I want to find out more about it. So you so you want to find out like where where it goes after it's been patrolling? Like if it has like a place yeah. where it just stops. Right. So you fall. Uh, okay, so we'll let, we'll let you we'll let you do that. Um, are you gonna be doing the same thing, Mugger? I am actually gonna break off and do the exact same thing I was doing. Now I'm looking for signs that say anything about science or anything about that, since I know they know what that is here. You see nothing about science throughout the entire town. Womp womp. Anything magical catch my eye? Anything magical? Uh, so if you're walking around town all over the place, uh, let me just go through what's going on. Before he takes off too far, I'm gonna use message and whisper him 120 feet. That's all I'm gonna say is a message. Okay.
I'm gonna have to reorganize how I how I keep all these notes, but at least I'm I'm just glad that I have them. All right, so walking around, you uh, you the the first place that you notice that you notice your your uh, detect magic alarm go off in your head uh, is uh, right outside the town hall where uh, you see you f you feel you feel uh you feel the uh you that's that's when you first detect like okay there's a magical item nearby. I'm going to focus and sense which way the magic item is and the type of magic that it's emitting so it's uh so you you focus you focus your energy you uh you, you focus you focus your energy you look you look and you you feel like it's coming from like the from like one of the not like not like the center but like uh one of the uh like somewhere close to the back of the building and the type of magic that it is is What the hell would that be? Um, there's conjuration. There's abjuration. There's evocation. Enchantment. I don't know why that took me so long to figure out. I'm going to walk straight into the building not stopping just walk up to the door push it open and straight towards the magical signal all right so you open the door uh you you aren't really greeted by you're, you're nothing it's just a you see like it's just an ordinary building you know you see like a small you see like a small waiting area uh with a couch uh you it's a couple a couple of doors and some stairs that go that go well up of course and uh a little fireplace uh but so you you follow it down a down a small hallway going down about maybe maybe like ten feet, and you hear and you hear and you hear like a conversation on the other on the on the other side of a closed door. Is the magic it's, coming it, from the other side of that door? It is coming from the other side of that door. I just I push the door open. I don't even like turn a handle. I just. <laughs> All right. So um, you try pushing the door open. It's uh, I mean, you it you you just basically make like a sound. It's locked, and you and you hear like all conversations stop. I'm I'm gonna shout and Cooper the door. Wait. Oh, like, like anyone there? Anyone there? Anyone there? Well, I I heard them, so it's let me in, let me in, let me. And uh, which I was knocking in the air because I have a plastic table so so i can't do a good knock when that happens you uh you hear you hear like a you hear like a lock uh sound uh the door opens and you see captain ludwig on the inside uh very and very quickly you see like ludwig with his with his posse of like four people you see dave inside and you see a uh and you see a human and you see a human woman in, in a very in very uh very and very nice looking garb like a like not like not like a standard not, not like a standard like a traditional like noble lady but like someone someone who has like a more commanding appearance and uh, uh Ludwig is in front of you and says what are you, what are you doing here what are, what are, what, are you, what are you trying to do do i see the magic item now that the door is open you do not see the magic item but you do detect that it's that it's close by that it's not on the woman but it's close by the woman like in like in like uh, probably inside of her dusk he has something magical. He like he, he looks behind and says, "Very astute. Get lost. We're talking here." And he slam and he slams the door and locks it up again. God. Also for the record. What's the magic item? What's the magic item? <laughs> What's the magic? All right, Sheldon Cooper. <laughs> he uh. He, they, they just they just ignore you at, the, at this point and they and they and they try to resume their and they try to resume their conversation it it continues you keep knocking I just want to know what it is <clears throat> yeah 
So, uh, so he, uh, you hear the, you hear the, you hear the, the, the click of the lock, the door opens, and, uh, this time, uh, he, he, you see Dave actually coming at you, and he's, and he's actually trying to push you back, trying to push you away, like, uh, uh do you just say Dave, I am Dave, or are you capable of saying, like, basic stuff? At this moment, I am... Dave. So you're saying I am Dave, and he's and he's pushing you back with his with his great barbarous strength. Uh, and yeah, you're I'm, just. I'm like I'm like trying to look over him. I just want to know what the item is. I am Dave. And uh, well, it, that doesn't help me, does it? The, the the lady the lady then says uh, then says uh, calm down calm down calm down uh, calm down she she uh look she uh steps around around her desk and walks forward and says if you want to what's your name I am Mugger Mugger if you want to know what the magical item is please come back uh please come back in an hour or two and I will tell you what it is happily wait should uh, Dave roll intimidation uh, I I turn around and walk away without a Which without one? a uh I would I. I would I, ordinarily I would say yes, but since you you're since they're all familiar with you, it wouldn't uh, it wouldn't it wouldn't be like an intimidation. Like you oh. you would just you would just order to, to shove to shove him away, like keep him out. Like if this had been the first time you guys had ever gotten like met, yeah. I should also say you detect magic. Also, is detecting magic from Dave. Yeah, but I, I assume that. that I've known that for <laughs> yeah two months. I probably did it as soon as I walked on the ship. Probably, I'm just just saying. Uh, but yeah, then the door closes. It's locked again. Only this time, Dave is standing outside guarding. Oh, I already turned around and walked away as soon as she said I could come back in an hour to look. All right. And I think that concludes that. Uh, is anyone else doing anything? I would have been trying to find the tavern after. Uh, returning that stuff to the ship because I'm not lugging that stuff around. Of course. All right. So you're going to the tavern. Is anyone else going to go with him? Does he walk by uh, where Tormund's sitting? Uh, yes, he would be walking by. Yeah, Tormund, go with him. Tormund, go with. Him. Give drink. All right. Yeah, that's. Yeah, it, it, that, all that weight was in the water skin. Ten water skins. It's fifty pounds. Wow. Really? <laughs> Surprising. Yeah. They're five pounds of beef. <laughs> Alright, so you... The three of you go into the, uh... You th the three of you go into the tavern. I'm gonna assume that... Uh, and, uh, also returning to... Kund. You said you were following the, uh... The, 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 the bronze protector. Uh... Just trying to, just trying to ascertain a pattern. Basically, you, you from after following it around for a few hours, you couldn't detect any pattern. It just seems to be patrolling around. Okay. And like, it doesn't seem to it doesn't seem to dock anywhere. It doesn't seem to stop anywhere. It just seem, it just looks around. It just walks around aimlessly, like not unlike a Roomba, but you know, it, it it'll 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 move on, it'll move on its own before hitting anything, and it, and it will move its head around and scan the area. Well, there's an obvious discrepancy here, though, because if it's not magical. And it doesn't get fuel of some sort. How it does move? <laughs> I'm, I'm just a uh, professional curiosity at this point. So we will say that you know that it's. We will say that based off what you can tell that it's that it's a, a pretty advanced technology, like not like Warforged advanced, but it's like advanced and like it's advanced up, up a different avenue. I'm just gonna keep studying it then, I guess, until I find someone else in the party. All right. Uh, if you're gonna, if if your plan is to keep studying it, you can roll another investigation check. Okay. Don't forget about your inspiration this time. Ah, it's pretty good. Well, he rolled in straight up nineteen. That one's good. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, what would you learn from nineteen? It's got feet. Also, are you proficient in investigation? Investigation, no. Okay. I am. That, that helps. <laughs> <laughs> so but with, I do have a high intelligence. So, so with what you're trying, with, your, with what you're trying to ascertain, 
you're you're basically you're observing you're observing how it works. Uh, you're trying to you're able to discover that the way it works is its design is, of course, it's it has its big arms are are used to like basically terminate anything by pummeling it to death if it if it senses any any just any any bad on its on its scans. And you also happen to notice that as it's walking around, it caught it caught a glimpse of a single flower somewhere. When it came across that uh, when it came across that flower, it marched up to it, it crushed it, and kind of, and kind of and kind of like and it it's, it had like little it had like little tiny claws that kind of that kind of put out little like little pricks to like kind of stab it uh, even more, and then it brought it back. Just a little just a little casual thing you observed as you as you uh, kept as you uh, kept following it. So okay, of all the, and another thing that and uh, of course just a. Uh, one of the things that you have have learned from it is that it it seems to be burning at something special, like it like it appears to, like it appears to have a uh, like a like a like a small water reservoir inside for the steam to keep it operating, but right. it seems to be running at like incredible efficiency. Like it keep like it's finding a way to like reuse the water and to absorbing the water. Is, okay. Like it still lets out some steam, but it, but it's like it's like a small amount of steam. Okay. After however long it takes me to figure that out, I'm gonna wander back into the center of town, just looking for the rest of the team. All right, well, you'll find you'll find them in in the tavern getting sloshed, or however they want to do it. So, uh, Brayden, Elatrix, and Torment are in the bar, right? Yeah. Yep. So you're in the uh, bar. Once again, trying to find uh, dice games. Dice games. All right. That's, that's my. Well, that and just talking to people, just, you know, finding information, and I do that at the dice game. All right, so what you the the tavern that you find isn't technically a tavern; it's just a huge ass inn, like a uh, like the the Hampton, like the the the, 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 the uh, do you guys have Potawatomi where where you all live? No, no, of, 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 course, of course not. That's a Potawatomi. That's a, that's a, of course not. That's a clear Indian thing that that which means it's a Wisconsin thing. Um, yes, it is. <laughs> Mm-hmm. So you basically you see like a, Americans here. What's like a what's like a uh, just, I'll just say you find like you find like the Holton Holt like a like inn of like of a of a of like uh, you find like a huge ass Holton inn sort of deal with with its own huge ass built in tavern. And the inside inside of it, you know, you see like a section of people. Uh, you see you see a you see like like a corner of people playing dice games. Men, what are you eating? Divers. All right. Do you want one? I would. Yes. Yeah, a special. Oh, the uh, pink, pink ones only though, because who eats the? Of course, who? only pink ones. <laughs> I got a funny story about that. I'll tell you later. All right. Dude, that uh, gives me a crazy idea. I'll talk about it later. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so um, you fi- you do find uh, uh, Braden finds a, b- a bunch of people playing dice games in one corner. Uh, you see mo- most of the most of the people inside are like standard standard fare, you know, for like what you'd expect for in a in a bar. Uh, the people that stand out, you see a single tabaxi uh, eating some fish, and you also see a, a high uh, two high elves, a high elven couple uh, sitting at the uh, at like a single table by themselves, looking very very looking very sullen. Keeping to them, keeping to themselves though, and uh, who else would be there? I forget. Is this an area where elves are less liked or more liked? Uh, West West Town is an area where uh, where uh, elves are less liked, but but the, but West Town is a West Town is a more West Town is a more like the entire area of Paralim is more peaceful and it usually stays out of like the drama of of the of the of the outer of the rest of the arc. Gotcha, gotcha. Uh, any anyone else that stands out? You see a uh, you see a, a tiefling you see a tiefling woman also at the at the bar ch- uh, trying to trying to talk to some people but really not getting a uh, really not getting much response from them, and you also see. Oh, that's that's about it. <laughs> okay. Um. Well, I go to the dice games. Uh, 
where the dice games are happening and seeing if anybody will, uh, anybody will let a just a normal human join them. All right, yeah, they they they're in there. Let they let you join, but they and they're and a woman is like, well, hello there. What's your name? Ah, I, I'm just Braden Petrick. Well, hello, Braden Petrick. Are you just coming on a ship? Well, welcome, well, welcome, welcome. We get it's always, it's always nice to see some new faces around here. You come to you come to play some dice. I'm always in for a good game and some information if I can gather it as I play. All right. More the game than the information. All right. Uh, well, uh, what are you looking? At, what are you looking to learn? Just any news of the town. Any news of the town? Uh, she. Well, uh, by the way, she 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 introduces she introduces herself as Mary. By the way, uh, so uh, news in the town. Um, I must say, not a lot of news to share. I mean, par I mean, mo the whole of Paralim is usually pretty peaceful. We keep to ourselves. We try to have a, we just try to live our lives uh, day by day. I suppose like the only news the only news that we've had is just you know we've been hearing about more orc attacks lately. More orc attacks? Well, yeah. I mean, I'm sure. I'm sure. Uh, well, are you? Are you from the Ark? No, I, I am outside the Ark. Oh well, uh, well, welcome to the Ark. Uh, uh, we are, and one thing you might learn about the Ark, you, uh, if you haven't learned already, is that there we have a huge orc population problem. Hmm. I've never found. I found orcs in certain areas to be bad, and orcs in other areas to be okay, but. I have an orc in my group, actually. Oh yes, Tormund, not orc. Oh yes, Tor Tormund, uh, half orc. Oh yes, I can tell that you're a half orc, and you don't seem. Well, okay, you're half orc. <clears throat> I'm sorry. But... <laughs> oh yeah, I can, I can, I can tell that you are. I can. Uh, are you also by this conversation, Torment, or are you? Or are you do? Are you doing something else in the bar? I'm just listening in. All right. Well, yeah, I can tell you. I can tell you're just a half orc, and you don't have the you don't have the bloodthirsty look of of standard orcs, which. Puts me, which definitely puts me at ease, but I'm sure you might know not might not put everyone else at ease. So just be wary of your of your surroundings. Mm. He's a good man. You don't have to worry about him. Of course, I'm not man. I'm half orc. Good person. <sighs> uh, but yes, we've had an, we've been having a more of an orc problem than usual, and Paralim as a whole, e of, of, of talking both West Town and East Town. We don't have a lot of we don't have much in the ways of defending ourselves. Like we have, we're able to keep ourselves, we're able to like keep them out. But uh, you know, they keep raiding our they keep raiding our ships, and they, we've uh, like we ourselves have survived uh, have been able to survive two uh, uh, two uh, two raids on our town. But thanks to uh, thanks to our small uh, group of defenders and our of course the machine protectors, we're able to drive them back. But uh, we gotta we gotta. We we're hoping to find a way to deal with them uh, so that they before before the, it becomes a real big problem. Well, uh, I wish I could say I could we could help, but I'm not. I don't know what our captain plans to do. So. Well, but well, I understand. Oh, we're all the whims of our captain. Well, if you ever find it, well, if you ever find a chance to, we'd appreciate it if you could do something. If you could do something about the orc problem, I know, I know, the governor here would be ver would be very indebted to you. Mm. Would be good, but it is up to our captain, unfortunately. And oh. Our captain seems to be interested in things. Oh, <sighs> I understand. Let's do this dice game. All right. So you go to the dice game. Uh, is is Elatrix uh, doing uh, going any uh, by the dice game as well, or is she doing something else in the bar? Um, she's gonna go to the bar and uh, order a pint. Order a pint. All right. Uh, that'll be a that'll be a single copper. Okay. So the bartender. Uh, is there anything noteworthy about the bartender that I need to that I need to remember? Doesn't appear to be so. The bar bartender is just like it's just like a it's just like a, a dwarf who passes up to you like here you go here's a pint. Fantastic. <laughs> and uh, 
we'll say that it's ale. All right, and if is there is there are you, so you're just you're just at the bar drinking a pipe by yourself then? Yeah. All right, then uh, back to this dice game. Uh, you see people you see people throwing in a couple coppers uh for for uh, it's it's like a big it's like a big pot basically. Since this is the only dice game I can really roll right now, whoever rolls the highest wins. Okay. And there's five people putting putting in uh putting in money. Uh, you, you notice Mary put in a single silver. And uh and you see and you see two people actually you see two people uh, like it, it goes it goes around in a circle like kind of like poker like I'll put in two copper I'll call that I'll call that I'll call that Mary puts in puts in a silver and then the rest of them and then the rest of them back out and now it's your turn to put in. I'll match that that silver. All right, so it's you and Mary against each other. Yeah. So we'll do that. We'll do this again. Uh, roll decks if you want. If you want to do it uh, yeah, traditional. It's gonna be a, st <laughs> a straight up. It was a straight up roll of decks. No cheating. All right. <clears throat> how how lit is? the room how lit is the room uh there's there's all kinds of there's all kinds of commotion going on over well commotion is the wrong word uh there's all kinds of there's all kinds of like conversation going on all over the, all over the place people drinking people eating people being people like being pretty merry except except for the two high el except for the, the to the high to the high elven couple keeping to themselves and the uh, uh beyond beyond those two like every every everyone uh everyone's having a good time oh and the the, the, the tiefling like she's not, she's not like she's not like upset but she's not like happy either she's just trying to like she's talking to people that aren't interested in her okay for the, I'm gonna uh, sneak away from the the dice table it's boring all right uh you uh for the record you rolled a 10 uh she rolled a 15 yeah, yeah i've already i've already deducted the, the, the silver from my oh okay <laughs> like oh boy that was a that was a good one you want to go again yeah, sure. All right. She puts up another. She puts up another silver, which deters everyone else from uh from going. Are you gonna match it? Yeah, I'm gonna match it. All right. <laughs> oh yeah, that keeps happening. <laughs> I just wanna. All right. So you both roll, and you come out on top this time. She rolls a seventeen. You roll a twenty. You roll a twenty-four. Like, oh damn! You got your money back. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's always fun. So does Tormund do anything specific? And uh, and uh, after breaking away, uh, he is gonna go and just <laughs> hang out by the uh, the uh, elven couple. So you and he's gonna he's gonna be hidden as best as possible. So you go up by the elven couple. Uh, are you actually sitting at their table, or no? I'm just gonna sit, kind of. I'm gonna try to stick to the shadows. I want to listen in on the conversation. All right. So you stick to the. Uh, let's have you do a stealth. Did you, uh, I assume that was you rolling stealth. Seventeen. All right. They're pretty damn good for an orc. Well, actually, you're a ranger, so you would be pretty good at that. Yeah. yeah. So you you blend in with the shadows pretty well, or not really with the shadows. You blend in with the crowd pretty well for a half orc. Uh, no one really pays you much mind. You don't seem like a th you don't seem like a threat to anyone. Uh, you're listening on their conversation a bit. Uh, you it, it's it's pretty quiet. They're just talking about you know like the food that they're eating. Uh, it's, it, it, they almost sound like a like a they almost sound like a like a married couple who's like whose marriage is dying after like after like forty years. Only they're elves, so it, their marriage has been dying for like two hundred years. And um. You uh, and you you notice that you notice the the woman like start to tear up a little bit, and uh and the hu and the husband like of course like grabs grabs her and uh you see him trying to trying to hold back hold back like a uh, pain in his heart as well, and you and you hear them uh. And you hear and you hear her you hear her uh utter 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 the sentence. I miss Kilka. Kill Kakar. And that is, that is all case, by the way. And the husband's like, I know, sweetie, I know. One day we'll one day, one day we'll see our son again. I 
I'd like to uh, join the table for the tiefling girl. All right. Uh, she, well, she's she's just at, she's at the bar. So you. So, I want to scooch on down closer. All right. So you hear her talking to uh to a to a guy like almost like she's trying to she's trying to pitch an idea to like her. So you see, we take the, we take all these. What my, my plan is, I got I got a whole I got a whole trunk of bees. We're gonna put them out there. We got I got a couple comb, We got a couple honeycombs out there. We put them out there, and Westtown will uh, after 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 the queen does her thing. We plant we plant some flowers around, and the and Westtown will have an export of honey. I'm telling you, if you get if you get out on, if you get in on this plan, you're gonna be you're gonna be rich. You're gonna be you're gonna be swimming in that copper and silver, and pro- probably even gold. You'll probably get a fair amount of gold too. And the guy is just like, uh, I just don't no no, I'm not interested at all. And then he just takes his pint and he and he walks away over to the gambling table. I tell her she's a genius. She, well, thank you, thank you for uh. Thank you, thank you very, thank you very much. I, for, I forget, like I give tieflings like an Arabic accent. Thank you very much. I, I appreciate that. I don't know if I'm gonna do it well. I, you, you think it's, you think it's a good idea? Well, yeah. Honey makes mead. For, yeah, of course, that's what I, that's what I'm saying. The bar, the bartender here will not get, will not get in on this plan. I, I swear, they're missing out on something great here. What is your uh, name? I, I'm, I'm Elatrix. Well, hello, Elatrix. Elatrix. My, my name. My name is is uh. Mello. My name is. My name is Mello. Mello. Yes. Okay. Okay. I'm ready. I'm. I have a notepad. I'm. T- That's M E L L O W. Got it. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Get in, get in on this. Well, I'm not asking. I'm not. I am not asking for much. Like it's like two gold. That's all I need is two gold to be able to, to be able to afford all the supplies, to be able to start to be able to start up a B range. And of course, you know I have eleven gold. I'll I'll give her. I'll give her the two gold. Really? I I promise you, you will get back triple what you give me. Sounds like a pretty stellar plan. <laughs> well, Elatrix, she she reaches out to shake her hand. I appreciate this so much. You will not regret. You will not regret that. You will not re- regret becoming a uh, a uh, what is it called when you when you help start up a business when you when you like help finance it. Partner. A partner. <laughs> I, I thought there was like another word. It's like investor. a Financier. investor. Investor. Thank you for becoming an investor. Investor. And 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 Melo and Melo and Melo Honey Productions. I, pre- I appreciate that. <laughs> I uh, I just I just wink at her. At the... You just wink at her. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> it, like, like is it is it like is it just like a wink wink or is it like is it is it like a like I'm into you wink or? Um. Well, in her in her bio, it says that she can't resist anything that's pretty. So. Oh. Is I'm it... just gonna. We'll, we'll say it's seductive, and if she she takes it that, that way, then then you know that's cool. <laughs> uh, she doesn't look disappointed by the wink, but she's not, but she's but she doesn't really follow up on it. She takes the gold, and she and she also she says, "Uh, bartender, uh, two more pints, please," and throws out two copper that that way. I'll take it. <laughs> Tormund's gonna sneak away from the uh, the elven couple. They're boring. <laughs> yeah, said. Um, He's going to look around for a uh, see if there is maybe a back room. See if there's maybe a back room. Uh, you find uh, you find you uh, looking around. You know, you see like a couple, a couple, a couple big openings leading to like other rooms. Like where they're mostly just filled with other tables. You see like a stage of people performing on um, one of them. And you see, and you do, and you do find like a, you, you do see like another door, like a let that opens up to some stairs. Uh, it doesn't really seem like people are allowed down there. It seems pretty quiet, like, uh, like, like almost like that's where they keep the supplies there. And you see stairs going, up, and you see like a two sets of stairs going up in two different directions. And like you, you ascertain that that's where like people stay when they come here. I'm gonna go towards the supply area. Uh, all right. Uh, following up on your stealth roll, you go, you sneak down the stairs, uh, and you see, like, and you just see like. Crates and barrels full of food and drinks and stuff. 
Let's see, how much can I carry? Uh, we have two rogues, and it's the and it's the ranger that's trying to steal stuff. Right. <laughs> All right. I mean, I'm technically stealing every time I roll a dice, pal. But you know. <clears throat> All right. Uh, Tormund like food. Tormund grab food. Tormund grab couple bags of food. Couple bags of food. Couple bags of food. Okay. Let's grab. Yeah, I think he's gonna grab probably about. Uh, four bags of food. Four bags four, of food. Four, four, four bags. What, what kind of food we got? Like uh, nuts. Um... um. Okay, we'll do this. Uh, if you're doing bags, I, I say bags, sacks, whatever. All right. Uh, four, four, four units of food. Roll four d sixties. D sixties. Yeah. I have I have another sh I have another uh I have another list of like it's not like loot stuff but it's like it's like stuff that's like trade value. All right. Okay, well there you go. <laughs> a 40, a 23, 43 and 13. Well, 40, you make away with a you you're going for sex, right? Yes. All right, well, 40 you get a single you get you are able to grab a a, a light sack it's uh, of of, ra of raisins. Uh you get a you have enough. You happen to okay. In the next one, you happen to grab another sack of raisins. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Twenty-three. You get a sack of rice. And thirteen, you got a sack of potatoes. Okay. I'm gonna go up to the bar, sit down at the bar, and you know, look at the bartender and say, "I I want beer." I want to drink. I have no copper. Can I trade for for valued supplies? Valued supplies. <laughs> um, the bartender looks at you like a little suspiciously. Hmm. Well, or all right, orc. You want to trade for drinks? Yes, I have one bag of potatoes. Bag of potatoes. Oh, we can can use... I get a drink? Make a deception check. Well, hot damn. Uh, they look at uh, the bartender. Looks at the sack and says, "Hmm. Well, I do believe we were running. We were running out of potatoes. Uh, yes. Uh, how many drinks are you looking to get with this thing? I don't know. Potato to drink." Thing. Three? <laughs> uh, Five? Sh sure, uh, we'll give you uh, three glasses, uh, cups of ale. Torment like, thank you. So he takes the sack of potatoes and throw and uh, and slides three dr uh, uh, drinks of ale towards you. Drink two of them straight and then just grab the other one and just kind of hold on to it. Okay. Good times here. Good times. Uh, let's get uh, getting back to uh, to uh, Mugger. Uh, at this, uh, you have you have successfully waited uh, t uh, an, an, a good hour. Uh, you've seen you see you see you've seen Ludwig and his posse uh, walk out, uh, and Dave follows up behind. Looks at you. Looks at you and says, "Don't you ever get in the way of negotiations of negotiations like that again." And then he walks, and then he keeps walking on by. And following behind, uh, you see the uh, you see the human woman uh, coming up to you and says, "Hello, mugger. You, would you like to come in?" Very much. So she leads you inside, and uh, and uh, set, and uh, like she doesn't close. She doesn't. She, she closes the door, but doesn't lock it, and uh, says and says, "So you want to? So you you found a, you know that I have something magical in here. How'd you do that?" I have I have a way to do it with magic. Impressive. Well, she goes and she she walks over to her desk and pulls out a single ring. 
is this is this the thing you were talking about and you 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 like the uh the, the alerts in your head are like definitely are like definitely z zoning in on that ring like like yes that is the thing and uh she walks up to you and says this is a this is a special ring that I that I used to that I used to use when I was out when I was sailing out on the seas this ring increase this ring it basically it's a, she explains that it's a ring of swimming and uh, you have a, it gives you a swimming a swimming speed speed of 40 feet while wearing it that seems very useful for people who need to breathe <laughs> uh, yes it, it is uh, very useful are you one of Karis's inventions no um I am here looking for him, though. Oh, uh, yeah. The last time he was here was I want to say four months ago when he delivered the protector. Do you know what where he lives? Um, I know that his main. I know that he's stationed. Like, uh, not stationed. Um, how would you say it? I don't know exactly where he's from, but I know that, like like a lot of his work comes from the Kirkwall mainland, if not from Kirk, from the city of Kirkwall itself, maybe. But I know that's where a lot of his work comes from. Thank you. That is helpful. You're very welcome. Would you be interested in parting with your ring? Hmm. I don't know. I have. But this thing has saved me quite a bit in the past. But you, I'll tell you what. I'm, I'm, I'm going to reach into my bag of holding and pull out a coin purse and show her the Eberron gold that I carry. Is Eberron gold any different from, from regular gold? No, I don't believe so. All but right. it's actual gold, and I'm sure it's like minted differently. But it's still gold. She, she looks at it and says, wow, you're definitely not from the Ark, are you? No, me and my brother come from quite a ways away. I can see that. But, uh, I'll tell you, uh, I'm not really interested in parting with it for money, but I'll tell you what, if you can do something for me, I might give it to you. What do you need done? I've been trying to talk your captain into helping us out, helping the village out. You, it seems like you get, it seems like he, he has a sturdy group of fighters, and you seem like one of those people. The orcs and Paralim have have been becoming a problem, and we would and we need someone to take care of them. We need, at the very least, someone to stop them from from making ships and coming out and raiding us. At the very least, if you can if you can if you can convince them to 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 help deal with the orc threat after dealing with it, I'll give you this ring. Things I know about the captain out of character, he would want money for this. Uh, for the for the uh, for this job, yeah, you uh, not necessarily. The captain is very determined on finding the lost treasure of Garen Hall Wentworth. He's not really he's not really interested in anything that's that's he's not really interested in anything that's like not going to lead him in that direction. The captain is a um, peculiar man. He is very set on his goals and if it does not further them he does not like to waste the time yeah i uh i had pretty much gathered that from a very long annoying conversation with him uh, but i i'm so, I'm so well, I'm sorry. I can't. I, I can't par with it. I can't par with it with the, for something for something for something that's that I can't par with it for anything less. I'm more interested in protecting the people of this of this town from any more danger. But uh, you never know. Maybe he'll change his mind one day. I I know at least one person that could come with me. Um. <laughs> If we had a way to get there that wasn't on the captain's boat, we could go do it without him. Hmm. Well, it doesn't seem like you're going to be able to help, unless unless you unless you abandon the captain. It doesn't seem like you're going to be able to help me because it seems like you're leaving for East Town tonight. At least, at least that's what I ascertained from what from my conversation with him. I have no real connection to the. 
captain other than the fact that he let me on his ship with my brother. Well, if you decide if you decide to try to help with the with the orc threat, we can supply you with a small we can supply you with a small boat of our own. But if not, I mean, I, I mean, I I understand completely. Let me see who I can talk into joining me. I know where most of the people I spend my time with are probably at. All right. So, yeah. So th that. So then you're gonna head to the bar then. I'm going to find my brother first, and then yeah. Well, I I believe uh, Kund went to the bar after after he was done researching, right? Yep. All right. So things I don't know. <laughs> you would have you would have figured it out at some point. You yeah, I assume much, but. Afterwards, yeah, I, I head to the bar. All right. Oh, Kund. I was looking for you. I've been waiting for you for hours. It seems. I'm sorry. I um had to wait an hour to talk to someone who had a fancy ring, and by fancy I mean magical. And then um they gave me an offer. The ring and a small ship to use. What ring and why do we want to work with them? We have a job. I, I show him the notes about the ring that I had taken while talking to her. The we people want to risk of. our employment for a, a ring of swimming? Well, not specifically, but it's also a good connection. She knows about Keras. Well, I I figured the ones we would find in here would be the ones most willing. Well, let's go find them then. I scan the bar. How many of them do I see? Uh, you you see you see everyone in there. I I believe everyone's in there. Oh yeah, except, except for Dave. Dave. He's he's with the captain. I am Dave. No, you're gone. <laughs> am I the only one that can barely hear towards you? No. No, he did get really quiet. Don't lean okay. him back. I'm comfy. <laughs> he's sense. naked. <laughs> Camera's on. He's not naked. Okay, now he's getting naked. <laughs> <laughs> So I guess you come up to us and <coughs> or gather us. Yeah, I I call everyone over. Right. Right. Well, Brayden says I I've heard of these orcs. The people I was playing the dice with I've mentioned them. Sounds like they're having a rough time with them. Oh, and by the way, uh, uh, sorry, uh, Mugger, you, when you walked in, you also noticed a magical, uh, something magical coming from Mary. Oh? <laughs> also, also an enchantment, but, yeah, go on. I'm, I'm gonna, like, get, like, three words in, and then I'm just gonna look over at her. And I'm just gonna walk up, like... Mid sentence, I stop and walk over to her. Okay. I guess I, I wasn't asking if the, if the woman had mentioned the size of the small boat she was talking about. Either way, I don't think the captain's going to be exactly happy with us leaving. Not that I really care, but. So you leave mid sentence and you go over to Mary, and uh, she looks up and you says, "Oh, you look like you're." Are you you look like you're one of Karis's inventions. I've been getting that a lot. I'm it talks! Not, neither is... And everyone is a bit surprised that you can talk. Have y'all not noticed Tim? Say what? Uh, I asked if they have, had not noticed him, and I point over at Kund. 
mean, I had, I mean, they they noticed, but Cun hadn't really made any, hadn't really said anything. Anyways, no, we are not one of Karis's adventures. We are here to find him, though. Well, I don't know. What's I... the magic thing you have? Magic thing? What magic thing? I'm gonna point to it. Uh, you notice, uh, you don't, you notice the gloves that she's wearing. And, uh, and, and she's like, there's nothing magical about these. That's where you're wrong. I don't, I don't, <clears throat> and she just, she kind of looks over at everyone like, uh, there's nothing really weird about, there's nothing really weird about my gloves. I mean, they're just, they're just black leather gloves. Can I see them then? Uh, I'd rather not. I will give you one gold to let me look at them for 15 minutes. Here they are. <laughs> and, um, if we... Definition of a whore. If we, uh, want to take a break, my son just woke up for any... He, he wants to be fed. So, we want to take, like, a 10-15 like minute break? Okay. Um... I would say pause then. So I think Panda needs to be up soon for work. Oh, do you? Yeah, I only got to be up for work in five hours. It's not too much of an issue. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, um, we can we can and end. I mean, one. I, I'm lucky enough. I get to sleep on the job more often than not. <laughs> I mean, uh, is there, uh, do we have people getting exhausted today right now? I'm always exhausted past 11 p.m. So that's just normal me. Torment have ale. <laughs> I mean, I'm okay with ending it here for the night. I I would like some sleep, but like I said, I also did take a power nap before this. So, all right. Well, I think if uh, I know I know hunts, and if you gotta get, some, and if I know if you if you gotta be awake in five hours, I don't want to keep you up forever. So I think we'll 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 call it, we'll call it a session. Uh, something I I mean. This this campaign is gonna have sessions where it might just be role play. Some sessions might be entirely combat. So there might be there might be a mix of the two. But uh, but you know we got some we got some good stuff done. You got you got some stuff fig figured out. Uh, if we're, if we're okay with ending it, I think if 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 we don't have any any many complaints, uh, maybe we maybe we maybe we'll end it for the t for tonight and we'll uh, get another game going soon. Sounds good. All right. All right. All right. Well then, I uh, won't keep my son waiting much longer. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. This has been our first episode of Adventures Over the Ark. Uh, I'm I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say everyone's name. You know their, their name. Everyone everyone here: Silo, Sonya, Drake, Hunts, Dwarf, Panda. All their information will be in the in the doobly doo. I'm waiting, but I don't have the camera. All their information will be in the doobly doo below, and we'll see you next time in the next episode of Adventures Over the Ark. Good night, everybody. That should be...